thank you very much again for joining this uh, new webinar. And uh, today I give you some more details about your host. It is Massimo with us. Massimo Pagani is our product manager for Indium International, a very long experience in uh, technical support and for installation and use of uh, electronic devices, the process industries. More than 20 years experience and the field of repair and development for device for consumer electronics. Uh, he's a, so beside the product manager, also assist with the lead for assisting our customers and this, uh, our link for to our R&D department. Massimo is also a functional safety engineer and, and, and they try to explain you as much as possible today uh, the uh, power supplies concept. Myself, Andreas Palora, I'm working in GMI since uh, 2015, uh, about 20 years experience in um, automation, mainly for machines and now process and hazardous applications. I'm responsible also for main uh, key accounts in the GMI. And uh, that's all, I'm also a functional safety engineer. We can go now with the topic uh, today. So let's uh, give you some details about our company. Now we'll, uh, it's uh, only a few slides, but it's better you know uh, who is GMI. It's a company that founded in 1993, former Icon Instruments company. And we have very long experience in uh, GCD safe and the SEAL certified devices and for main uh, critical applications in the oil and gas, chemical and petrochemical markets. Uh, we, sorry, I skip it. This is, uh, let's say, our uh, product range. We produce intrinsic safety isolators, safety relays, isolators, power supply, safety power su supply, which is the topic of today. Multiplexer for uh, hazardous application, termination boards for DCS uh, producers, uh, heart multiplexer, surge protections, indicators, and also we, uh, the last board is for our manual for seal uh, application that is free for our customers. So if you need one copy, you just need to send us an email and we provide you a copy, both in electronic or paper format. And uh, about the company we produce, of course, we have uh, all kinds of certification in, in that the uh, market needs for different uh, application, the market in uh, uh, area also. So we do have certification for European market, for Russia market, for America, for South America, for China, Brazil, and um, Japan, and so on. We also, of course, have a uh, systematic capability certification for all products that are also <coughs> certified for seal applications. We provide also last uh, information, maybe it's important for you. We also provide a five years warranty for all products. And uh, that is our about our production. We our facilities uh, in Italy, in Milan. We have a complete, uh, let's say, integrated uh, factory complete traceability and uh, full testing for all products. And, uh, but we have also a presence in uh, different parts of the world. So we have a different uh, 10 offices, but uh, and, uh, 75 distributors, local authorized distributor with the local stock also, about 200 people, total staff, and also some numbers about the courses, functional safety engineer courses, and the number of installations all over the world. Uh, that reference list said so that, that these uh, are, let's say, the main uh, names that are using um, and buying our products, differentiated by system vendors, EPC, OEM, and end users. So I don't want to go uh, too much on that. So let's go to the topic of today. So there is uh, the first, uh, if you want to uh, answer to this uh, poll, just uh, to understand what kind of, uh, let's say, attendees we have today. If you are mainly in, uh, uh, for standard power supply application, if you use also seal rated power supplies, maybe we got some questions in the registration part. We have seen that uh, none of you, um, only few 
using C-rated power supplies. We try to explain today why it's important. And also from this um, uh, poll, I see that a uh, small part of you use uh, C-rated power supply. Okay, thank you for your answer. I stop now the poll and uh, I leave uh, uh, Massimo with the, the presentation. Thank you, Andrea, for your introduction. Well, let's move on the presentation of uh, today's topic, which takes uh, into consideration the power supply system and the value that uh, they have within a safety loop. Let's start by introducing the concept of uh, safety instrumented system. SIS is a set of uh, subsystems that make up the safety loop. Within this safety loop, uh, we have uh, field devices such uh, as a transmitter or sensor, which allow us to control, detect, and measure variables in the field, such as temperature, pressure, or the other. They are driven by barriers or isolators that uh, provide for li limiting the current towards the hazardous area or to isolate field instruments. And uh, in turn, uh, the signals sent by the filter loop will be acquired and managed and interpreted by what is the brain of the SIS or the PLC DCS system, which will decide on any action to be taken to make a plan to save. And again, power, power supply interfaces, as can be a safety relay, which uh, will then act on a valve and uh, on a, an actuator, which allow us to bring the system safety in case of need. The main concept that uh, needs to be understood is that every single element of the system must be sized uh, with a seal level, such as uh, to allow us to obtain the overall seal of the seal required. All the power supplies that will be part of the system, for example, those that will power the PLC DCS, those that will supply voltage to parade bulbs and actuators, or uh, those that will have allow barrier isolators and transmitters to work properly, will also play a fundamental role in a safety-related loop. And it's also important that they also have an adequate seal level. All components of a system, including power supplies, must be safety-related and have a seal level. This helps us uh, to have a safety loop and with the correct redundancy, a loop with high availability approaches. Now, let's take a look at the power supply. What are the possible risks and conditions that we consider dangerous in relation to the use of a, a power supply? The concept of the safety is very important also with uh, regard to power supply system because the failure of the power supplies can cause serious accidents that lead to serious losses in terms of human lives, serious environmental damages, and serious cost loses for companies. For this reason, it's necessary to have safe devices that guarantee high performance. But uh, uh, what are the dangerous conditions for a power supply system? Well, uh, mainly there are two dangerous for condition. The first one is uh, an indefinite load voltage in a range between two and 20 volts. Must be considered as dangerous failure of our power supply. This is because an incorrectly powered load works or can work out of specification. And this leads to a reduction in the load performance that can cause a premature instrument failure. Often we try to avoid this uh, issue using redundancy, but uh, we mistakenly think that two power supplies in parallel 
are sufficient to make us immune from possible faults in the power supply system. Redundancy cannot solve on its own and cannot guarantee us immunity from power supply failure. Because a standard power supply system, it does not take into account the common mode faults that can afflict standard power supplies. These common mode faults can cause Fourier system faults with the related production downtime, which would significantly affect costs. The redundancy of security power supply minimizes the risk because common mode fault failure are considered in the seal calculation, necessary to get the certification for a safety related device. The second dangerous failure condition of a power supply is when the output voltage reaches a value higher than 30 volt. In this uh, condition, the load is subjected to an extra voltage which can damage it or in case of uh, output voltage higher than 15 volt, the field instrumentation can suffer a definite disruption. We can take, for example, an engine cooling system uh, which works uh, thanks to a standard power supply. Suppose that uh, this standard power supply fails and goes into an over voltage condition, damaging the cooling system. This will lead to an uh, overheating of the engine, which will lead to serious consequences for the bull system connected to it. Once again, I want to underline the value of having a safety power supply system, which guarantees us high performance and high safety. So uh, why it's correct to use a safety power supply system? Below are the main reasons that lead us to advise against uh, the use of a simple standard power supply. A standard power supply is not designed based on the directive of ESC 61508. It does not have, have made a calculation defined for the safety function to be obtained. It does not allow to have redundant protection from over voltage issues. Why in a safety power supply system, redundant protection are a fundamental requirement. And again, a standard power supply system can be used in a redundant configuration but uh, they do not guarantee that our application is totally safe for the reason related to common fault, uh, common fault which we have seen previously. And also standard power supply often require external or in diodes to allow for redundancy. This means uh, to add external wiring that especially for high load currents create an high voltage drop, which has a strong impact on the supply voltage. It's true that uh, it's possible to adjust the output voltage to compensate for the voltage drop, but uh, this operation increases consumption considerably. In addition, a standard power supply has a higher number of spurious faults than a safety power supply. We know well how a spurious fault can also lead to dangerous failures for the application. And again, a standard power supply use internal components with, uh, with limited operating range to keep cost down. This affects the lifetime of the device. For this reason, internally to the safety power supply system are used the components with a higher operating range that allow the system to work at a lower stress level. This leads to less failures and consequently a considerably longer life than standard power supply system. Next. At this point, uh, why it's important to use a safety power supply system? First of all, we know that the standard voltage for a normally energized load is in the 20-30 voltage DC range. 
as uh, we have seen previously, conditions that lead uh, to power supply output voltage between 2 and 20 volt and higher than uh, 30 volt are considered dangerous failures, which negatively affect the application. Well, a safety power supply significantly reduces undetected dangerous faults thanks to a uh, built in diagnostic system. In fact, if anomalous output condition is detected by the safety power supply diagnostic, it brings the, the output to zero volts, which represents the safe fault condition, plus a full transistor alert the PLC system, which can act as per C specification. Even uh, in case of a safety power supply output over voltage condition, the internal diagnostic activates the redundant protection system for limiting the output voltage, which brings the latter to a zero volt, this means into a safe fault condition. Now we introduce the concept of a safety power supply applied to a typical application as the, the energized to safe or energized to safe. Uh, as we know, typically the safety system are designed to remove power to the system, uh, typical the energized to safe application. Therefore, the failure of the power supply, which goes to zero output voltage, is considered a safe failure. So we assume that all safety functions are de-energized to safe or de-energized to free type. Really, there are many applications where the safety function is to energize the load. Therefore, of the energized to safe or energized to free type, as in a fire and gas system, for example. A safety power supply is designed to guarantee a sub-2 or sub-3 safety level also for energized to safe application, which need to energize the load on request. Well, for this type of application, redundancy and over voltage protection are essential. Next. A power supply redundancy system must be used when the safety of the power supply is essential. For this reason, the redundant power supply system are used in critical sectors, such as uh, the oil and gas or pharmaceuticals, and in all those applications where the loss of power supply translates it into the loss of sensitive uh, information, or in all those applications where the certainly of having a correct power supply on request is fundamental. It must also be used in all systems where every minute of production downtime is extremely costly. Let's talk about system availability to, to the process. As we see from the slide on the screen, for the energized to safe application, typically normally energized loads, the C3 safety level is easily reached through a type one out of one configuration. For this type of application, we can achieve true redundancy and increase in availability to the process. This allows us a further quality step in guaranteeing production continuity at the plant and higher safety level. As regards uh, energized to safe application, typically normally de-energized loads, as mentioned above, redundancy is essential to reach a C2 or C3 level. In fact, without uh, um, redundancy, with a single safety power supply, only the C1 level can be reached and also availability to the project but uh, by composing a configuration one out of two or one out of three, it's possible to get an higher C level up to C3. And uh, at the same time, increase the availability of the process also for energized to safe application. 
Well, uh, some words uh, about over voltage protection in this next slide, Andre. Over voltage protection, as mentioned above, is fundamental in a safety power supply system because it allows us to reduce the risk of system downtime considerably. In fact, if one of the safety power supply fails in a, an over voltage condition, the protection brings the output to zero volts, allowing the other safety power supply system to continue work correctly without the risk of sending the system to shutdown. A standard power supply without protection uh, would cause a shutdown of the bull plant with the consequent repercussion of the productivity and the cost. A simple level power supply system with over voltage protection is able to increase operational safety, productivity, and reduce its cost. In the following slide, we see what is the weight that the individual subsystem have within a system. It's important that every single component of a system, including the power supply system, is included in the PFD average calculation to achieve the required safety level. Every single element has its own percentage weight, which must be considered. Below, we see other advantages that uh, using a safety power supply brings. First of all, it can be installed in Zone 2, Division 2. This allows us to reduce wiring costs as it can be installed much closer to the load. More power, supply, uh, power in a small space with the use of the rack system up to six power supply inside. The REC system also allows us to reduce wiring costs and allow us to have the diagnostic module on board to control all the main function of the safety power supply system. It's also possible to connect uh, via Modbus the diagnostic system to a remote system. Easy maintenance and troubleshooting thanks to the OTA swapping system which allow the live replacement of an element in the rack without having to disconnect any connection. Operation in a harsh environmental condition, thanks to the vibration test and extend temperature range up to 70 degrees Celsius. And uh, as mentioned so far, availability for the safety related application up to C3 level. Here we show the typical application where safety power supply are used. For example, offshore platform instrumentation, as we can say before, a firing glass uh, patch, fire bring system, BNS and BCS system, supply for uh, ESD system, and powering of safety related electricity. Well, uh, Andrea, we have finished our presentation now. I leave the you another talk. call just to have your opinion. You want to answer? We, you cannot uh, make questions through your chat because it is disabled. But uh, if you push a Q and A button on the bottom bar, there you can make a question to us and we answer it. Indeed, the next part of the presentation will be um, just dedicated to questions. So uh, some questions we got uh, from you when you register uh, the participation for the webinar. We try to consolidate in the next uh, presentation to be the more, uh, let's say, detailed or let's say, um, basic uh, idea about uh, the application. Okay, thank you. So we try and stop now. So. Thank you very much for answering and uh, I stop and uh, I also stop this presentation. I want to start with a new one.
which uh, collect all the information about uh, the your question. Okay, just one second, I will uh, share again. Okay, I think we are online again. I see already a question from one attendee. Yes, Andrea, we have a question. Is power supply considered for seal calculation? Yes, we can say in the presentation to have a safety loop, we need to uh, include uh, power supply in seal calculation. Is a fundamental to uh, reach uh, sea level for bull loop. Okay, so let's go with the, the question, Massimo. Yes, uh, as Andrea said uh, before in the next show presentation, we have the question we are usually asked about today's topic. The first question uh, is uh, 24 volt DC power supply considered phase safe and do not impact the safety of the system? Sometimes a really complicated question, we try to answer by uh, writing something here. So, uh, so the impact on the power supply in the seas, uh, um, it's not true that power supplies are phase safe device, so with the PFD equal to zero. So if uh, we consider that uh, 20 to 30 volt DC is a typical uh, range for uh, power supplies, as we must have explained uh, before, uh, we can have a dangerous voltage that uh, can be higher than 30 voltage, and this can damage the instrumentation of the load. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to uh, introduce a redundant protection circuit uh, in the over voltage condition in order to stop and limit to a maximum 30 voltage this uh, uh, failed condition. But also we can have the condition uh, between uh, the voltage from a power supply, if it comes to a value, very low value, between two and 20 volts. This is also a dangerous condition because uh, your load, uh, it's, uh, it's a supply with a voltage which is outside the normal operating range, okay? So this condition uh, is of course avoided because uh, in the power supplies, the safe power supplies, there is, uh, of course, uh, uh, there is, of course, uh, some uh, common, uh, common cause failure. Uh, maybe you are aware about the beta factor. So the beta factor means that some devices, or uh, if you are using a redundant system, uh, in uh, all uh, applications, you can use uh, two devices from the same manufacturer, from the same batch, from the same uh, uh, product line, those devices can fail uh, probably at the same time. So this beta factor must be considered when you are using uh, also redundant uh, uh, product. So this uh, increases the probability of failure of your system. So let's go to the next one, Master. Well, thank you, Andrea. The next one is uh, how power supplies can influence performance of SIS and what is their design and preventive maintenance requirements? Well, so, uh, so let's say that in the SIS, uh, the power supply is, is designed to keep uh, and go to a safe state by uh, lose power, lose of power. So, bring to zero the voltage up. So that is the energized to retreat functionality. So in this case, means that the power is to able, is to, able to reach a, a phase state, state. But in the factory, of course, and, uh, the power cannot be turned off because there are some architecture that needs, must be respected. So let's say that the power has a dual role in safety. So the power must be reliable. So the, uh, the over voltage has to protect the, the, uh, the instruments. And you have to avoid the under voltage, the, the voltage we say between two and 20 volts. Both 
those, so high voltage and low voltage can cause the instruments to fail and not to go to safe state. That is also the point. So the second point that the second uh, role in the safety that uh, the power needs to be available. And uh, so it's very important to use uh, to have redundant uh, and low sharing power supplies because the risk, uh, the risk for uh, to, to trip a plant to, to bring to a zero volt or to stop a plant for a single failure on the power supply can be very high. Let's go, uh, we have another slide for this, um, um, for this uh, question. So probability referring on demand, uh, so PFT for any product, any CL uh, certified product, it's, uh, this value increased by the time. So by the time you can have uh, a possibility the device uh, have failure and this probability increase. So if you are in a certain level for CL3 when you start your plant pro in a few years, in one year, two years, and maybe also lower time, your system can go to CL1. And in this case, uh, your uh, power supply or your instruments uh, the probability of failure for your instrument is even higher than uh, initially. So, well, Andrea, thank you. Uh, often customers uh, ask to us uh, what are the possible differences uh, between safe and dangerous failure? So, well, there are so safe and dangerous failure for a seal uh, product is. Uh, uh, it's very clear, no? It's uh, sometimes uh, you are uh, in face with that problem. So let's go. Let's say that uh, for normal state, normal uh, uh, normal energy application or safe state, normal energy application for the power supply, it's uh, an output voltage to stay in the range of 20 to 30. We already repeated lot lot of time during the, this presentation. So. But dangerous state is uh, an output voltage uh, low, lower than 20 and higher than 30. So 30, more than 30 is very dangerous for uh, instrumentation, but it's also dangerous when it's, uh, the, uh, the voltage is uh, lower than 20. So the steel certification uh, wants warrant that that uh, uh, PFD is suitable for the seal level specified. It means if you're looking for uh, application or seal uh, uh, rating for your loop that must be the level two. The C certification grants that, that, that in this case the power supplies is uh, suitable for that uh, uh, seal uh, loop. So in this case, the multiple of the protections uh, grant a really low failure rate and the possibility that you can increase the seal level by one or two redundant uh, power supplies. Let's say that for uh, um, normal energized application, a single unit power supply is, uh, is enough for seal free, also without a redundancy. Okay. Why, if you have a normal de energized, typical firing gas applications, there's just one power supply is uh, uh, sufficient for seal one. If you wanted to reach a seal two, you need uh, a, a, a second redundant power supply okay and uh, yeah that is uh, more or less uh, the explanation for this uh, point so okay, we have another, one. another uh, another question typical question uh, as to us what is the difference uh, between safety and uh, availability so well, safety is uh, something very clear for people because uh, it follows the IEC 51508 for the manufacturer and the IEC 51511 for the uh, say company that use and uh, make plans and systems like you probably. So it uh, means that uh, these uh, devices are really safe and uh, follow the safety standard for the processing industry. And uh, so this device uh, should uh, or really perform a function when required. That is the very important thing. So I want to open 
might be wise to shoot open with a very high probability or close or start or stop. Okay, that is very simple function, but uh, if uh, your product is a seal certified, you should perform that function very, very, with a very high probability, okay? Availability, availability is a little bit different because it is the proportion of time for which the equipment is able to perform its function. So it's a, availability is a different from reliability, hmm? but it's very important because uh, an item uh, maybe is, is, uh, is not very reliable, but it, it can be repaired with really quickly when it fails. And uh, it can be av uh, available soon. So that's about the power supply. The power, power supply fails during normal operation. I lose is availability. Availability is a loss. So in this case, availability is when the device should work I should not act for any reason, and maybe is a stop uh, is a stopping for failure. That in this case, the device lose will lose its availability. And uh, so we prepared this slide because it's also the previous one, but I want to repeat it because this point is very important. If I'm using for normal energy application just one power supply. Okay, and uh, this is a, uh, if uh, here at the bottom is a, for non energized, if you remember, was uh, enough for a CM3 application. And uh, this is uh, not redundant, so one power supply is enough for this application. In my application, it's a safe, but it's not really available. It means that uh, if I want to have a high availability, I have to use another power supply in the redundant application, with the, the, the first one, in order to, let's say, grant high availability. Otherwise, the failure for the one power supply you're using for the seal application, it uh, uh, will stop your plant for without any, let's say, compromise. The second power supply is very, uh, grant the very high availability on your plant. Okay, so uh, for normal uh, for normal energy, also one power supplies for C1, that you can remember was just for C1 enough, uh, is not really, really uh, available. The second one increase my redundancy, but unfortunately do not increase my availability. This is just an example. Thank you, Andrea. And uh, often I meet uh, the next uh, question. What are the possible configuration to reach a C level, Andrea? Okay, this is another example. So <clears throat> for normal energize, which is the most uh, common application. So in normal energize, we have seen that in one power supply is enough for C3. And uh, in this case, uh, look at our product range, this is uh, uh, enough, uh, uh, if we contribute just uh, at the 10% of the SIP, my P proof time, so the period of time where I can grant a SIP free certification is uh, one and a half year. If uh, this single power supply contributes uh, to the 20% of the SIP, my P proof time can be increased at three years, okay, for SIP application. But you can see easily, that uh, if I'm, my configuration is enough for C2, so I want to reach that C2 on my uh, loop, a single power supply is, uh, uh, say, C2 will remain for C2 for 18 years, for 10% of the SIP, and really 20 years for 20% of the SIP. So it means that uh, uh, this power supply can be used in the C2 application, and it can be used also, uh, let's say, can be considered more or less P-proof less. So you don't need to test it for C in the C2 application. Let's see also for two parallel power supplies in normal energy, I see that my P-proof time will be really long for C3, eight, eight years for 10% of the, the C, and 16 years for 20% of the C. 
really 20 years. This is a limited 20 years because it's a really a lifetime for the device. I can have more parallel in a normal energized uh, application and uh, I can increase uh, not too much uh, to one because in, in this case, I, I have the possibility to get more failure. So this is, these are the value for four parallel or six parallel power supplies on my uh, of course, I can have uh, I can have more availability, but the, we are just talking about seal, and the seal uh, live in this case will be a little bit lower. So there is also the example for normal de-energized, but uh, maybe you, you, you can stop here and uh, go to the next slide. Otherwise, we have time to finish probably the webinar. Yeah, well, Andrea. <laughs> Uh, other question uh, is uh, the safe power supply shall be used for the systems that only participate in the C? Uh, yes, yes, because of course we have repeated for a SIF, a functional safe power supply must be used in a SIF because uh, uh, for the safety parameters must be really considered in the calculation of the SIF. It's very important. Otherwise, if you, your power supplies in the, that you are applying for the seed is not uh, sealed, your entire loop won't be sealed. Okay. Of course, for all the other application, uh, not uh, safety, um, you, for non-safety application, you can use a standard power supply. Okay. There are no, let's say, uh, there is no need to use a safe power supply. But I want to repeat that uh, in the SIF, in the SIF loop, uh, a power supply must be in use also, must have a SIF certification. Well, and Andrea, is there any solution for installation in a Zagros area? Yes, we do have. Uh, of course, uh, we have this kind of uh, power supply that can be used in. Uh, Prozone 2 or DIP 2, American also, and uh, that are uh, suitable application for really for zone 2. And uh, uh, we are talking about 20 amps and solution with the uh, 50 plus 50 redundant with the mounting rack. Also, uh, very interesting because uh, this is a small, let's say, promotion for our product, but uh, it's uh, very unique because it can be also hot swapping in zone two. So for, for the one, uh, for, uh, for the, the, the power supply that is uh, with a rack mounting, I can have also micro switches that uh, uh, control the presence and disconnect the power and I want to remove the unit uh, from the rack. Uh, the important thing is if you have a two redundant power supply in the load sharing, uh, the, the first unit uh, can be removed because of the testing, because of maintenance, because of any kind of force. And the second one will take over all the power. So without uh, stop uh, your plan. So, well, and uh, now we talk about uh, the agnostic uh, uh, for the power supply with Modbus interface, uh, Maria. Yes, with the Modbus, uh, yeah, let's go back to the unit. Uh, people asking more and more for the agnostic uh, application and also power supply is uh, one important part must, uh, that, uh, uh, that is really, if you have a uh, different loads of power by just one power supply, it's very important to detect any possible failure from uh, it. And uh, this unit have a possibility to have this diagnostic module with a local display for any easy control, easy viewing of the, all the unit connected. And this is also, <coughs> uh, this has uh, the possibility of the Modbus uh, RT interface that can, can be connected to any uh, DCS or PLC with the Modbus uh, uh, RTU master port. And by this master port, I can, uh, uh, I can let's say, detect and I can uh, ask any and information to the power supply connected, the device is connected, and the parameter the monitor can be the, like the AC voltage, current power, frequency, the PC out voltage, current power, current sharing, temperature, cold, 
and any kind of uh, uh, parameter uh, for the unit connected. This is a, uh, uh, say, um, very good uh, tool and a very good uh, option for those power supply. Well, Andrea, and uh, in the presentation, we talk about uh, um, REC and the classing, uh, classic wiring. Yeah, Massimo, maybe you can answer based on yeah, your yes. experience to this. Yes. Because it's a very, very common uh, question from our customers. The comparison between the redundant power supplies. Yeah, you can answer Massimo if you like it. Sorry? You can answer to this uh, question with, uh, very, because it's based on your experience also. Okay, uh, but uh, the system redundance, REC or standard, uh, we have the possibility to use uh, the REC uh, system with uh, uh, two power supply module inside, the redundant plus uh, uh, diagnostic module. This is a rack, uh, typical rack in uh, ninth uh, inch uh, that uh, allow us uh, to parallel uh, the two uh, uh, power supply system. Uh, in this case, we have uh, easily maintenance, don't require wiring connection and uh, connection or disconnection du during normal operation uh, is uh, all of us, uh, even in case uh, uh, we, uh, we place the, our system in zone two, division two. This is uh, thanks to uh, the auto swapping system that Andrea explained before. And uh, again, uh, we have uh, inside the diagnostic model available. For the standard power supply system, we need uh, uh, often uh, an external wiring to parallel the two devices. Uh, uh, third, uh, of course, uh, the maintenance require uh, a disconnecting uh, one of two uh, system uh, to replace them and uh, yes it's better in price in price but uh, often uh, uh, this kind of uh, user is uh, have the the need of uh, an external diode uh, uh, or ring uh, instead, uh, in the rack solution, are inside uh, in the in the rack. Yeah, uh, the difference probably is uh, people are let's say uh, say very sensitive and sensible to the price, and the price is higher for the rack, but uh, it has a, a lot of advantages like uh, the disconnection, the the diagnostic, uh, and so on. They don't have the external diodes, uh, the wiring is uh, completely different in the rack mounting system. Yes. Thank okay, you. so we answer, maybe we go to this one. Okay, what's happening if one device connecting to the power supply shorts? Oh, it can happen, it's a very common thing, and uh, uh, you can have a different loads connected to the output, uh, and uh, um, based on our experience, uh, or let's say we see that the old power supply basically stop working because they, they detect this uh, this uh, short on output. But uh, we let's say we decide, and uh, because asking from different customers, we decide to uh, implement a different features on the power supply itself. So in case of short, in case the power supply is short. Uh, this is uh, will deliver really high peak of current uh, for a small duration of uh, 0.5 millisecond. And this uh, is, uh, will be enough uh, to, to guarantee the instant opening for the fuse in the, in the load or the circuit breaker, of course. In this case, uh, uh, the, 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 the detective short will be open again. 
and uh, and the, the power supply for the other uh, loads will be maintained without uh, any disconnection. This is a special feature we add in our uh, power supplies. Well, so we practically we finished and uh, we thank you very much. We remind you that uh, there are other webinars dedicated to other topics on our calendar. You can see on our uh, website is always updated. You can see this uh, webinar uh, recorded, the record, you can uh, recorded webinar in uh, our YouTube channel and the website, in our, this, uh, at this link, you can find the link to the YouTube channel. So you can uh, share with uh, your customer, your friends, uh, anyone you want. And uh, thank you again. We have another, the last call. Thank you if you want to answer. It is very important for our also uh, uh, marketing. Thank you. Keep your time for answer, please. Andrea, we do not see the, the pool. Ah, it's okay, I see people are answering. Okay, thank you. I stop here. Thank you for voting. And uh, We remind you our names and our contacts if you want to uh, send us an email. Uh, we already, we can send you some questions through your email because you will see on your, when you register your uh, participation. Anyhow, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you and see you soon. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Massimo. Bye-bye.